I've been holding off on mounting the expansion links to the motion plates until I was comfortable that I'd cleared all the issues associated with the valve gear and I think I've now reached that point. Flushed with the relative success of filing the radius rods, I decided to mark out and drill the holes for the expansion link bearings the good old fashioned way. What you can't see in the video is that I'm wearing one of those magnifying headsets to enable me to accurately line up the centre punch against the marked lines. And here's a great little tip that I picked up from Chris over on Dream Steam, and that is to use a file to remove the high area around the centre pot mark. A word of warning here, you'll often see me drilling small holes this way without using a clamp. This is really not good practice and I would suggest you don't follow my approach, even though I only do this with small drill sizes. Next job is to drill and tap two 8 bay holes in the base of each bearing. Because I'm working with such small parts, I used a disc attachment on the wiggler to find the left and rear faces. I always find working with these smaller BA bolts nerve wracking. This is a 1.8mm drill for tapping. Using a spring loaded tap follower is an absolute requirement at these sizes. I've broken way too many taps in the past. I don't show it, but before drilling the second hole, I do a visual check and realize that something is amiss. Unfortunately, the camera is way out of focus, but what I'm trying to show here is that the spacing between the two tapped holes in the bearing base is different from the two holes I've drilled in the motion plate. After a bit of further investigation, I realised that two of the holes I've drilled in the motion plate are out by 1mm, so these two holes here should be 16.84mm from the top surface, but in fact they're 184 And given how many attempts I've already had at making these motion plates, making another is not an option. So instead I've got to move the holes. At 2.2mm diameter, the holes are very slightly under 6BA tapping size, so I just run a tap straight through and fit a bolt in each hole. I then apply some flux and a small blob of solder against each of the bolts and apply some heat to solder the bolts into place. And because the bolts were slightly shy of the surface on the other side, I flip the motion plate over and do the same again. With the bolts now soldered in position, I cut off the heads with a hacksaw and get to work with the file and some memory to remove all trace. I then remark the holes correctly this time, centre punch and drill through. Jobs are good. Un. Before I go any further, I really do need to solder the links to the trunnions. So I clean up the relevant faces, add some flux, screw the parts together, add some solder and apply some heat. I focus my attention on the joint between the link and the trunnion and try to keep the heat away from the trunnion shafts. Although I managed this successfully on one, the other was an utter disaster. I do try and rescue it and manage to keep the expansion link, but I have to make a new trunnion. And this time around my soldering was successful. Next I remove the now redundant bolt heads from the back of the trunnion and give the rest of the link a good clean with some memory. One final job before assembly and that is to make these little pads that the bearings sit against. They're a simple exercise with a hacksaw, files and a drill. Don't be fooled by the video here. What looks like a few minutes of assembly is actually the result of a good few hours worth of work. 
making minor adjustments and trimming these parts so that they fit together correctly without binding. Even after all that work, the expansion link is a little bit tighter in the bearings than I would like, but I have put a reamer through the pair as they're mounted. I'm still not ready to solder the motion plate parts together. Although it's all looking good, I do want to see the valve gear working before I make that commitment. I really do need to make some pivot pins. But not only has Don not given any details in his design, but I have a real challenge with holding small parts in my lathe. To deal with the former, I can figure something out, and to deal with the latter, I'm awaiting delivery of a new collet. So until that arrives, I need to crack on with something else. Thanks for watching.